Hey everyone, it's Mark from Flight Sim School. Today we're going to be learning how to prepare our 777 for a shorter but still real world flight where we can learn about all of the basics, but also some of the finer details of flying this airplane. We're going to jump right into it today and our first stop is going to be in Simbrief, which is a must for flying this plane. And there's only a couple of fields that we need to set up to get going. The airline and flight number fields aren't absolutely necessary, but it's not a bad idea to put them in regardless, so you can use whatever you want here. I'm using United today just because that's the flight that we're reproducing. Our origin is going to be LAX. Our destination is SFO. From there, we can pick our 777 from the airplane type dropdown. For the 300ER, the ICAO code is going to be B77W. And then in the dropdown right next to that, we'll want to also pick the PMDG specific profile as well. For a short tutorial flight like this one, we're going to leave almost everything else as is. And once we look at long haul planning in a subsequent video, we'll look at the impact of changes to our cost index and how step climbs work and a bunch of other little details as well. But for now, the only thing that I'm going to change here is the departure runway. I'm going to pick runway 25 right just because it's going to be a lot closer to my departure gate just to save me on some taxi time. With that said, we can generate our flight plan so it creates our full OFP. And once that completes, we can head back into Flight Sim. We're going to be starting from a gate today. And since the 777 is a wide body airplane, you should in theory pick a heavy gate from whatever airport that you're starting from. Although I found that you can make medium gates work in a pinch as well. When you load in, if this is your first time flying the plane, it's going to start in what amounts to being a turnaround state with a bunch of things already set up for you. And it's my understanding this is actually a somewhat realistic setup for when the pilots actually show up in the real plane. So we're going to leave it as is and start our pre-flight from here. If you've already fiddled with the 777 and your start state is something different, that's not a problem. You can always reload this exact state that we're in right now by going into the CDU on the PMDG setup menu. And then under there, if you pick the load state option, you can also pick the apron, which is going to be the state that we're in right now. And it'll set everything up exactly like we have it. We'll do a little bit of setup on the overhead first. Like we were just saying, our battery and our APU are already on, so we're set from a power perspective. But another common way to prepare for your flight is to run the ground power instead and only power up the APU once you're closer to pushing back since it does consume fuel. However, for today, because we're keeping things simple, we're just going to leave it as is. Next, we can enable the Adira, which is basically responsible for tracking our position, airspeed, and other inertial stuff. And it takes a little bit of time to align itself. So while it's doing that, we can do a couple more details. First, on the overhead here, we can just close the emergency exit guard just to make sure that those lights stay on if there's an issue during the flight. From here, we can go down to the tablet and then into the electronic flight bag app, which does require a little bit of setup if it's your first time using it. So if we head over to the settings tab, the first field that appears right at the top here is the Simbrief alias field. And what you've got to do is go into your Simbrief profile and on the actual account page, you'll be able to find the Simbrief alias that you need to plug in here by just clicking on it and then just typing it in. Make sure that you've hit the save preferences button at the bottom and then from there you should be all set for every subsequent flight that you do. So we can head back over to the first tab at the top and now we're going to request new data from Simbrief. And what that's going to do is pull down everything that we just planned in Simbrief. And you should see your route show up on the map from the departure to the destination. And if you don't, there's likely been a configuration issue with your Simbrief account. So you'll just want to double check it. Now we can head over to the CDU. It should start out on the menu page, but if for whatever reason it isn't, you can always press the menu button to bring you back right here and then go into the FMC option, which is right at the top to set up our flight. That's taken us to the ident page and it's showing us a little bit of information about the plane here, but we don't actually have to do anything on this page. However, right at the bottom of the CDU, you can see there's a message in the scratch pad asking us to enter our inertial position. That's related to the fact that the Adiru has finished aligning itself. So what we can do is clear that message and then we'll move over to the pause in it page so that we can set all of that up. 
right below where it says set inertial position you can see there's a bunch of empty boxes right below that so to confirm the alignment what we actually have to do is to take our current coordinates and plug them in there the easiest way to do that is to just click on the GPS position that's right above. That'll put the coordinates into the scratch pad and then we can plug it in next to the empty boxes. Now we can get to the actual fun stuff. And if we go through to the route page, there are a bunch of fields that need to be filled in here. But Simbrief is going to give us a little bit of help to get the basics out of the way. So what we'll do is pick the route request option that's on the left and then from the screen that comes up here we can pick the Simbrief route which is showing our LA to SFO flight that we just programmed and now from here we can do a few different things. First off we can set our payload so that'll load our cargo and baggage for the flight and then we can do the exact same thing with the fuel on the right hand side which will load in all of the fuel that our Simbrief plan says that we should have on board. The last step is to load our route, so we'll go into the select route option all the way at the bottom. And that's actually going to bring us back to the original route page that we were on. And we can see that it's requesting the route info for us. That process usually takes a couple of seconds to run and you'll get a couple of messages in the scratch pad telling you that it's downloaded a bunch of data. And at that point, we can just clear out all those messages and we'll pick the load option on the left side to uplink the route information. You'll know that it's done uploading everything to the FMC once the activate option appears in the bottom right. And it can take a couple of seconds for this to happen. But once it's done, I actually like to press the activate and then the execute button right away. Even though we have a couple more details to wrap up, this makes things just a little bit clearer. So right now we're on page one of two of the route page. And if we go to the second page, this is where we can actually see an overview of our route. But right now you can see we've only got our two en route waypoints showing here. So we're missing our departure and our arrival procedures. Airliner routes all have the same basic layout with some optional bits and on either end of the route you'll have your origin and your destination along with the runways that you're going to be using. And we also have a departure procedure today, a couple of en route waypoints and an arrival procedure. And that's going to bring us about 90% of the way to our destination. The only detail that you won't find on the route is the approach and we're going to look at how to pick that in just a bit. So to load in our procedures, we'll go to the departure arrival page of the CDU. That's going to take us directly to the screen where it shows us all of the departures at LAX on the left hand side of the screen. And then on the right side, we have all of the available runways. So it's going to be up to us to pick the right combination of the two. I'm going to actually select my runway first because that's going to filter the list down to only the procedures that are valid for that runway. So I'll need to go to the next page to be able to find 25 right. The route says that we need to use the summer two departure. So again, we'll just go through all of the procedures on the left with the next page until we come up on the summer two. We'll pick it and now it's actually going to ask us to pick the transition, which we can figure out by looking back at our sim brief route. The first waypoint after summer two is stoked. So what we have to do is pick that transition if it's available and we can see it's right here on the second page. So we'll just confirm that option. That covers it for the departure. And now we have to do the exact same thing for the arrival procedure. So if we press departure arrival again, that's going to bring us to an index page where we have to tell it what procedure that we're looking to choose. We want to pick the arrival into San Francisco now, so we'll press the line select key that's next to that. And again, what we're going to be offered here is a bunch of procedures and runways to pick from. We've got 28 left as our arrival runway in the Simbrief route, so I'll pick the ILS to 28 left since that's going to be the easiest way to land this plane. And then in the arrivals on the left, we can pick the Surfer 4 procedure, which is again on the next page. There's no transition for the star, so I don't need to pick anything. But just like with the SID, if there were options listed here, I'd pick the one that matches the previous waypoint of our route. So for example, if there was a surfer transition, I would pick that one. 
On the right hand side though, we have to pick the initial approach fix for the ILS. And this can be a little bit tricky if you don't have charts because you need to figure out what lines up with the arrival procedure the best. So if we pull up our, our arrival chart, we can see the last waypoint of the Surfer 4 is Eddie. And if we have a look at the available transitions on the FMC, we have an Eddie option listed right there. So that's the one we're going to want to pick. And then from there, we can execute that change so that our procedure is all loaded up. From here, if we go back to the route page and then we go back to page two, you can see our whole route is listed here. We've got our departure, our en route waypoints, the arrival procedure, and finally our approach procedure as well. And the only thing that we can't really see here are all the individual waypoints that make up the departure, arrival, and approach procedures. So what we'll do to check that out is we'll go to the legs page and at the same time we'll validate our route. The easiest way to be able to visualize all of the waypoints of the route is to switch the nav display into plan mode with the dial that's just above the navigation display. We'll increase the range a little bit just so it's a little bit easier to see and we'll bring the tablet over with the click spot that's just on top of the eye where it's written Boeing. When you're in plan mode at the bottom of the FMC, there's a step button that when you press it, it's gonna take you through all of the waypoints that we programmed for the route. And you can compare that to what you see on your nav display and on the OFP page of the tablet, just to make sure it all lines up correctly. What we're actually looking for is that all of the waypoints that we have in our SimReef plan match what we have in the FMC by just walking through them one at a time. But on top of that, another thing that you're likely to run into with most routes is something called a route discontinuity. A discontinuity is basically a point along your route where it wants you to decide what to do once you reach that waypoint. So for example, Right after stoked here on the ND, we can see that our route just sort of ends. And on the CDU, we have empty boxes before we get to the next waypoint. So that means that once we reach stoked, we need to tell it what to do next. On our OFP, we can see that after stoked, we're going to reach our top of the send point, but our next actual waypoint is going to be surfer. So to tell the FMC that that's what we want to do, just go straight from stoked to surfer, is we'll click next to surfer on the CDU to load it into the scratch pad, and then we'll plug it in on top of the empty boxes. That's now showing us what the route will look like once we execute that change. You can see on the ND, the dashed line is where it's going to fill in the gap between stoked and surfer. So we should be all good with that so we can execute it to confirm it. There are some other situations though where you wouldn't want to remove the discontinuity like we just did here. And if you want to see an example of that, I'll leave a link in the description to how I handle that type of situation with the 737 because it works effectively the exact same way as here. We're just about ready to load the performance data. But before we do that, we should load in all of the wind data first so that it can do all of its calculations as accurately as possible. The wind data got downloaded from Simbrief when we did the uplink earlier. So all we actually have to do now is load it all in in two different spots. But before we can do that, though, we'll need to put the legs page back into map mode. Once we've done that, the first spot that we have to go is actually on the legs page. And in the bottom right, we've got a route data option that we've got to click on. And then from there, we've got to choose the load wind option again in the bottom right. That'll think about it for a couple of seconds, and once it's done, you'll just need to press the execute button to load it all up. We need to import the winds one more place for our descent calculation, and that's actually on the VNAV page. From here, we need to go to the next page until we end up on page three, and we're going to choose the forecast option from here, and then finally we'll pick the load option. That's going to take another couple of seconds to load it all in, but that's going to pretty much wrap it up for wins. And our next step from here is going to be to initialize the performance data for the plane, and we can start that off on the init ref page. Simbrief uplinks some of the performance data for us already, and we can start by accepting that data to load it all in. And that's still going to leave us just one or two more things that we need to sort out ourselves, most notably the zero fuel weight that's on the left side. 
The zero fuel weight is the weight of the plane with all of the passengers and the cargo on board, but without any fuel whatsoever. And this is actually calculated for us automatically. So all you've got to do to retrieve the number is press once next to the zero fuel weight field. That'll load the value into the scratch pad. And then we can press on the zero fuel weight field again to load it in. By putting in the zero fuel weight, it was able to automatically calculate the gross weight of the plane. So next we can head over to the thrust limit page. And this is gonna allow us to tell the engines how much we want to derate our takeoff to save on wear and tear whenever we can. And the easiest way to figure all of that out is to go into the performance calculator on the tablet. What I usually do here is I'll start by pressing the three import buttons to load all of the current data for the airport the airplane, as well as the weather. And like that, the only thing left that you'll have to really pick by hand is the runway that you're using for takeoff. So in our case, that's going to be 25 right. Depending on what the weather is doing, you might need to tweak the runway condition so that it matches what you're seeing out of the windows. But otherwise, for this very basic tutorial, we'll leave everything as is. And again, we'll explore a little bit more of this in a future video. So if I press calculate, that's now saying that we need to use takeoff two for takeoff. So if we head back to the thrust limit page now, we can see it's on the takeoff setting at the moment and our engine output is a maximum of 106.8. Once I pick the takeoff two setting though, you can see it's dropped down to 94%, meaning that that'll now be the maximum output of our engines on takeoff. On top of the D-rate that we just did, the performance calculator also calculated an assumed temperature that we can enter in the cell field in the top left if we really want. And that would reduce our engine output even more on top of the D-rate by making the engines think that it's that temperature out. And that way they'll naturally produce less power because warmer temperatures result in less engine power. Of course, reducing engine output in a simulator isn't absolutely necessary either because we're not paying for maintenance or wear and tear on the engines. And if you choose to just leave the full takeoff power with no D-rate and no selected temperature, you'll be able to take off like an absolute rocket. We're going to leave our climb performance as is, which means that our thrust limit page is all done and we can head over to our last page that needs to be filled out now. And that's the takeoff page. The flaps in the 777 for takeoff are almost always set the flaps 5, so that's what we're going to punch into the scratch pad, and then we'll load it in right at the top under the flaps section. By doing that, that's now given us our final V speeds that we can confirm by pressing next to each of V1, VR, and V2. And the last thing that we need to calculate on here is the center of gravity. The planes actually calculated the right CG for us already. All we need to do is just load it in. So if we press once next to the CG field, what that'll do is load it into the scratch pad, just like we saw earlier with the zero fuel weight. And then we can click a second time right there again to load it into the field. That's given us what our trim units that we need to use for takeoff are, but we can't set it right away because we have the hydraulics off still. So we'll keep this in mind and we'll actually come back here just a little bit later in our startup flow to set it properly. At this point, we've pretty much set everything up in the CDU that we need for our flight. So in the next video, we're actually going to push back and get airborne. In the meantime, please make sure that you like the video if you learned something useful today and subscribe as well so that you can get the rest of this 777 series.